When we left the Harvard Natural History Museum, I knew the day was not over. I made a mental note as we left of a poster I saw advertising a free lecture. The topic was on the first filming of a black hole, a test of Einstein's general theory of relativity. I was hoping we could attend the midweek lecture for a night out. This lecture is offered by the Harvard University Science Center and was scheduled for April 17th in conjunction with this year's Cambridge Science Festival. More on this lecture later. Before plotting our next step, we first wanted to grab a bite to eat at one of the local restaurants. Sometimes we want to eat fast, and sometimes we will sit and watch the scenery and people. We considered going to Tati, one of our favorite but busy places for coffee and pastry. Tati has a beautiful, clean look and delicious food. But today, it is a bit crowded, and we decided for more of a lunch than brunch. There is so much good food in Harvard Square. The Border Cafe is good value and good food. It is right next to the Harvard Coop at the corner of Church and Palmer Streets. Cordula's on Brattle Street is also a fun place to eat and you can enjoy outdoor seating. Today we wind up at Felipe's Tequera on Brattle Street. We get an outside seat and a quick sandwich as we plot our next move. At Carol's suggestion, we decide to go to the Boston Marathon finish line on Boylston Street in the Back Bay. The marathon is tomorrow, and we figure it will be a madhouse trying to get there, even if we use the tea. So, we decide to take an Uber. We have never used Uber before. We use my newly loaded Uber app on my Android phone. I start up the application, enter my destination, billing information, and Uber responds with where nearby drivers are. Once I confirm the ride, we are provided information on how to identify the Uber vehicle and the driver. Within five minutes, we are picked up at Harvard Square to be driven to Boylston Street in Boston. Plenty of information was given to us to safely recognize the vehicle and confirm the reservation. No money changes hands, and that includes the tip. We deal with some road closures and general confusion of Boston traffic. We see various vehicles, signage, and pedestrians advertising messages important to their various causes. It reminds me of the diversity we live in. While in our Uber, we get behind some bicycle-style rickshaw. This looks like fun. I think I see a ride in these in our future. And of course, we see a duck boat, a real sign of springtime in Boston. We make it to the marathon finish line on Boylston Street in less than 20 minutes from Harvard Square with our Uber. It was a good ride and we felt real safe. All for under 20 bucks, which included the tip. A real deal, if you ask me. We converge with the large crowds and get our photo ops at the finish line. The enthusiasm and positive en energy was palpable. People all around and you could feel the excitement building up to tomorrow's marathon that starts in Hopkinton. We snap a picture of Carol crossing the finish line. The marathon finish line is in Copley Square in Boston's Back Bay. It is in front of the Boston Public Library. The Boston Public Library is a great destination in its own right. From Copley Square, you can sit across from the library in some beautiful outside places where you can enjoy some classic Boston views. The Boston Public Library is at the corner of Boston and Dartmouth Street. When you enter the library from the Dartmouth Street side, you have to remind yourself that you are in a library and not an old mansion or museum. The architecture and construction detail is breathtaking. On a previous trip that Carol and I took to Boston, we stumbled on the library. We always wanted to go into the Boston Public Library, so this was our chance. Once into the library, we face the expansive grand staircase protected by two carved marble lions. We walk up the staircase, noting the gray limestone steps embedded with fossils. The entire staircase hall is encased in yellow sienna marble. The two carved lions are also made of the sienna marble, which memorialized two volunteer regiments from Massachusetts that fought in the Civil War. Once on top of the staircase, we admire the entrance hall and staircase from above. We then enter the Abbey Hall, which in the late 1800s was the book delivery room for Bates Hall. The Abbey Hall received its name from Edwin Abbey that was commissioned in 
1893 to paint murals that would encircle the room. The murals tell the story of Sir Galahad's quest of the Holy Grail. From the Abbey Hall, we enter the adjoining Bates Hall. Bates Hall is spectacular to see. The 50-foot high barrel ceiling and the length of the hall is a sight to behold. The hall was named for one of the library's first benefactors, Joshua Bates. His donation came with the conditions that the institution would be an ornament to the city and it would be free to all to use. Since its opening in 1895, Bates Hall has been used almost every day. From Bates Hall, we enter the map room which provides a display called Maps and Art Crossing Boundaries. The display outlines different types of maps, map projections, and map distortions. The floor in front of the entrance has an old style map of Boston laminated to the floor. The display of maps is very well done. It provides examples of maps that were put together throughout history. There is also a map room that can be used by the public to examine maps from the library's collection. We then head over to the portion of the library that borders Boylston Street. On our way there, we pass through the library's courtyard, which has beautiful gardens and sculptures. The courtyard, abbey room, and event rooms are available for use for public and private events. Once in the borrower services area of the library, we check out the facilities available to the public for checking out books. There are plenty of places to sit and pour over books and magazines. You can grab a coffee, a soft chair, a book, and just relax. There are several Boston Public Library branches all over the city. The intent of the library is to make their resources available to the public for free. There are pro approximately 24 million volumes in the collection. It is the third largest public library in the United States behind the Library of Congress and the New York Public Library. Okay, back to the day before the marathon. We saw there was a marathon trade show going on in the Heinz Auditorium, so we ventured over to check out the exhibits and to look for free stuff. We noticed several charging stations which are used to charge up the athletes for the 26.2 mile run. It was interesting to see the various people from all over the world that participate to make the Boston Marathon a world-class event. Each runner has a different motivation and inspiration they are running for. We decide to take the tea back to Cambridge rather than an Uber. As we walk along Boylston Street towards this tea station, we pass some street entertainment and then we come upon the site of where one of the bombs went off during the 2013 Boston Marathon. While standing in front of the site where one of the memorials will be erected to the bombing victims, we hear sirens on Boylston Street. We look up and see a wheelchair being pushed by a runner. It is Team Hoyt. Rick Hoyt is completing the marathon a day early, complete with fire and police escort. Anyone familiar with the Boston Marathon has seen the father and son team of Dick and Rick Hoyt running the marathon. It was very emotional to be standing at the site where people lost their lives and so many lost their limbs and their sa sense of safety. Very sad. However, one could see and feel from the crowd at the finish line that people in the city are recovering. Seeing Team Hoyt go over the finish line is a great example of the re resiliency of the human spirit. This does not mean people will ever forget what happened the day of the bombing. Boston Strong. As we continue up Boylston Street, we take a right to cross over the Mass Pike where we admire a large number of locks on the fence over the Mass Pike Bridge. I have read these are called love padlocks. The idea is you write the name of your lover on the lock, attach the lock to the gate, and throw away the key. Hopefully the keys are not being thrown on the Mass Pike below. We decide to head back to Littleton. We have to take the MBTA green line back to Park Street and then switch to the red line. When we get to Park Street, we enjoy some good music while waiting for the red line train, which was going to take us back to Alewife. I remind Carol that when we left the Harvard Natural History Museum in the morning, I noticed a poster for a free lecture at Harvard University describing the technology used for taking the first ever picture of a supermassive black hole. Photographing a black hole is a big deal. Black holes were predicted by Einstein's general theory of relativity over 100 years ago. 
The challenges of photographing something so massive in size and so far away are many. We head into Harvard midweek for the seminar. The cost of tea parking, a couple train fares, and a few hours of time is all this cost. The lecture is being given by Michael Johnson of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. He was one of the scientists on the project. We walk through Harvard Yard and arrive at the Science Center to scope out where the lecture hall is. We locate the hall and see there are plenty of seats, so we decide to have a quick dinner at one of the food trucks in the Science Center Park. It is a beautiful early spring evening. After enjoying our dinner, we walk back into the Science Center and see it is bustling with activity. This is the week of the annual Cambridge Science Festival. Tonight there are hands-on activities set up in the Science Center for kids, parents, and visitors of all ages to learn, learn about and to enjoy. I notice in the back of the Science Center a large machine and decide to investigate. It turns out to be the IBM Mark I computer, which is one of the first electronic computers. It was built during World War II to support the war effort, in particular to perform calculations for the Manhattan Project. I had seen this machine before and then realized I was near the entrance for the Harvard Putnam Museum of Historical Scientific Instruments, another Harvard mu museum we need to cover in another show. The Mark I computer used thousands of relays to perform its calculations. The Android phone in my pocket has many thousands of times more power and speed than the Mark I. Amazing how far computer technology had advanced in a relatively short period of time. Of special note on this display is a picture of the first computer bug, which was identified by Grace Hopper when she found a moth stuck in between a relay in the Mark II computer, which is the predecessor of the Mark I. Time is running short for the start of the talk on the black hole. The once empty lecture hall is filling up quickly, so we claim our seats. The speaker provides a very clear and coherent presentation of what a black hole is, the challenges of locating a black hole, and the Event Horizon Telescope, which was used to photograph it. The Event Horizon Telescope is a network or array of telescopes that aggregates information from locations all over the Earth. The resulting information results in some stunning photograph of what a black hole looks like. There are many facets to this technology, ranging from astronomy, cosmology, meteorology, physics, computer science, to name just a few. The presentation was very well done and reached the diverse range of the audience. Questions were fielded which showed the audience's understanding and in a few cases gendered offers from the presenter to meet further to discuss their ideas and to entice interested and qualified people to join the project. The presentation ends and we head back outside. We have plenty of daylight left as we walk back to the tea station to grab a train to Alewife. We are back in Littleton before the sun sets. Total cost, about $20 for parking, tea fare, and dinner. We really feel fortunate to live so close to Cambridge and Boston.